for you to take your Bibles and like for you to turn with me for a few moments to Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the wise men. Now, I know before I get started, some of you say, well, now the wise men were not there at that very moment of birth like the shepherds were, and uh, of course. And I know that. But oh, but it has such meaning. Uh, as you study about the wise men, you'll begin to find out, even though they came probably a couple years after the Lord was born, that uh, they came for one reason, and that reason was to worship. Why are we here today? We've come for one reason, and that is to worship. I was reading a little article the other day, and, and it says, what if it had not been wise men, but it had been wise women? And they went on to say, had it been the wise women, number one, they would have probably stopped and asked for directions. <laughs> number two, they would have gotten there on time. Number three is that once they got there, they would probably have had help Mary to deliver the baby, probably brought a casserole, <laughs> probably went by Babies R Us and got some uh, uh, diapers and formulas and wipes and things of that nature. But all together we realized that this was a very special, special story. I was reading the other day about a couple uh, letters that was written to Santa Claus. I'd like to read them to you. I thought they were rather interesting. One uh, said this, says, Dear Santa, you didn't bring me anything good last year. In fact, you didn't bring me anything good the year before. This is your last chance. <laughs> Signed it as Albert. And then there was another one that uh, I thought was very amusing. It says, Dear Santa, there's three little boys who live here at our house. There's Jeffrey, who is two. There is David, who is four. And there is Norman, who is seven. Now, he said that Jeffrey... It's good some of the time. David is good most of the time. Norman is good all the time. P.S. I'm Norman. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact is none of us are good. That's the whole reason and the whole purpose of Christmas, is it not? Is that the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and therefore realizing the need of mankind, God looks out among the heavenlies and realizing that there is one by the name of Jesus Christ, a Savior, and there he came and was born of a virgin. Grow to become a man, a man that who never sinned, never took upon the form of sin, never took upon the seed of man, but that he took upon the form of the seed of the heavenly Father. That's why the virgin birth is so important. That's why it's so in understanding to realize that Jesus Christ was just not a way to salvation, but he is the way Amen. to salvation. And God sent his only begotten son, the Bible says. Why? Because he loves us and that he gave. Oh, I love Christmas. I love Christmas because it's a time of giving. It's a time of receiving. It's a time of expressing one's love and one's appreciation to one another. As you will study about the wise men, 
you'll realize that they gave. They not only worshiped, but that they gave. They came and they brought gifts. And there, a gift is an expression of attitude, of expression of worship. It is an expression of, of appreciation and love. And so we find it so beautiful here, found in the story. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. And I want to read to you about the story of the wise men. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Did you see that? They have sought to do something very, very special. That is to worship. I trust that that's what you've done here tonight, that you've sought by coming to worship and it says in verse 3, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the priests and the priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back to me that I might come and worship him. And when they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream, they should not return to Herod. They departed for their own country another way. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful story of about these men. You'll notice that these men were motivated by a star. The Bible talks about that this star led them a journey of almost 300 miles or more. And I think it's interesting that the star led them directly to the city of Bethlehem. Now you know Micah prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born that he would be born in Bethlehem. I find it interesting that Jesus, the bread of life, was born at Bethlehem, which means, of course, the house of bread. 
He is the one that came to satisfy the souls of mankind. A man or a woman that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. And oh, how Jesus portrayed himself and described himself so clearly that I am the bread of life. And whoever eats of me shall have everlasting life. But it not only directed them to Bethlehem, a particular place, but they directed him to a particular person. Now, modern day of where they came from was probably Iraq, about 300 miles or more. There in Iraq, the land of Babylon, the land of Baghdad, there they went through tremendous amount of difficulty, tremendous amount of trouble. And they come and they lay down before this little child three special gifts. Now, I find it interesting. The Bible nowhere tells us that there were three wise men. They were probably many, probably a whole caravan of people, scientists, men that were known as astronomers that, who studied the stars. Very intelligent people. Why we say three wise men, of course, is because the Bible depicts that there were three gifts but probably there were many, many of those men. But they came with a purpose. Not only did they come to a place, and not only did they come to find a person, but they came to a purpose. They said, where is he? Boy, that's a good question. That's a good question that every man and woman should ask. Where is he? Is he in your heart today? That's the name. That's the thing that you need to ask. Is he in my life today? Oh, I do not only celebrate Christmas in my head with all the festivities that we have here today. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the the parties and and uh, the festivities of the hour, and forget what the purpose is all about. But these wise men did not. They continued, and they came for one purpose, and that purpose was to worship. I think it's interesting that that word worship is broken up into two words, worth ship. In other words, in order to worship someone, he must be worth it. We're not talking about a God that is dead. We're not talking about a God that has new eyes, and no ears, and no hands to see and to hear and to feel. But we're talking about a living God who came forth out of the grave, who is sensitive to our needs. And they came and they realized he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Amen. He is the mighty God. He is the lamb of God. All oh, these men, yes, intellectually they were intelligent. But I believe that they were spiritual men as well. That this was a spiritual journey that they were on. But there's another person that's in this setting of the story, and that's old King Herod. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse 3, now when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem 
was with them. Why was he disturbed? Why was he disturbed when he heard that there was one that was born in Bethlehem? Well, I'll tell you. Listen to what the Bible says. And when he called together all the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. I'll tell you why he was disturbed. Because he realized that the prophets of old said that this one that would be born would be, would be the king of the Jews. Oh, here it is, the king of Jerusalem. And there, if you know anything about Oh, Herod, there's three words that could sum up who Herod really was. Clever, crafty, and cruel. Very cruel man. I mean, he was a demented man. As he told those uh, wise men as they came seeking to find this babe, go find him. And when you find him, come and tell me that I might go and worship him as well. Well, that was nothing but of a lie. He wanted to find him to kill him. Right. He was a murderer. He murdered his own mother. He murdered his own sons-in-law and his own sons, fearing that they would try to become ruler. And king. Oh, he was a very demented man. And yet, you'll notice that Herod's concern was not over a little child, but he was over concerned about his own life. Herod felt threatened, paranoid, and he felt very threatened. But you'll notice that the Bible says that Herod went and asked the chief priest and the scribes and the Pharisees, where is this child? And I find it interesting. They said in verses 6 and following, this is what the prophet has, has written, but you, Bethlehem, is the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exact time the star had appeared. Listen to this. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And as soon as you find him, report back to me that I too may go and worship him. Herod's design, as we know later on, was to kill this child. We know later on that Herod made a decree that all male babies two years and younger that they were to be killed. That's why it gives us the indication that as the writer of Matthew shares with us, he does not call Jesus as a babe, but he calls him a young child. So he was probably about two years of age when they came. But then you'll begin to notice something very, very special. I find it interesting that he called the scribes and the Pharisees and he asked them the question, where is he? They didn't even know. Oh, they were wise in Scripture, but in their heart they were empty and they were cold. And the Bible reminds us that they had religion, but they didn't have salvation. I'm afraid that's the problem with a lot of people today. They have religion, but they don't have salvation. Right. I was talking to a young man 
the other day, and I was invited into the church, and he said, uh, he said, I'm not in this religious mess. I said, well, you know what? I'm not neither. He looked at me, and he said, well, I thought you said you were a pastor. I said, I am a pastor. I said, religion is what killed the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, died, prayed, placed him upon the cross. It was religion. It's not religion, my friend. It is a relationship. Right. And that's exactly what the scribes and the Pharisees didn't have. They did not have a relationship. They had religion. What a shame. What a shame to come to church week after week after week after week and have all the knowledge about Christ in your head and die and go to hell because your heart was wicked and empty and in despair. Oh, but the Bible says in chapter 2, verse 5, it says, for this is what the prophet has written in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem. I find it interesting, over 330 pro uh, prophecies were given so that to portray the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the first time. And yet you begin to realize every single one of those prophecies has come to a fulfillment. Oh, it's so interesting of how the Lord Jesus Christ has brought this special event together. Was well, not by accidents, was well, not by coincidence but it was by the divine plan of a holy father fulfilling a promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. I was reading an article not too long ago about the history of Great Britain. One of their diplomats were kidnapped many years ago. And as he was kidnapped, the country that had kidnapped him had requested and demanded a ransom. Great Britain would not pay the ransom, but they went to battle. And they fought. And they spent over $25 million to rescue one man. As I read that, I thought, my, what a tremendous price that was paid for one man. And then the thought hit me. That's nothing to compare with the price that the father paid that he gave his only begotten son, only begotten son, to perish, to die, to suffer. See, we cannot celebrate Christmas if there is no Easter. Right. But because there is an Easter, the resurrection, we come together today to celebrate. We've come to, as the wise men did, bow before the presence of that young babe, that young child. Bring before him our gifts. What kind of gift can you give him? Your heart? Your mind? Your soul? Your body? Present your bodies as how? A living sacrifice. Amen. Holy, That's right. which is acceptable unto God. So what we do, we come and we gather tonight around 
the Lord's table. Celebrating. Rejoicing. Worshiping. Giving honor, adoration, glory, and praise to that mighty one called Jesus. There is something special about that name, Jesus.